So we're looking at a D major scale today and um, watch the video for free and pick up all the tips and scale patterns. But um, this comes from my ebook, Major Scales for Classical Guitar for Beginners to Intermediates. Um, this is the inner section of the book, which just goes over some common um, closed and open position patterns. So make sure that you've watched the video on how to practice scales and ways to practice scales. That will go over lots of tips and uh, different fingerings that you should use in the right hand and, and different ways to improve your scales. This is just going to be kind of looking at some D major scales, um, very common ones, and then uh, we'll just be talking about them a little bit as we go. Uh, so there's a link for that book under the video, but as I said, watch the video for free to get the tips. So we're gonna be going over some open position scales, some closed ones, and then an open string shift scale. So the open position scale in D major, because there's two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, um, there's no notes in the first fret, so we might as well just play in second position. Um, not much to say there, uh, it's just it's in second position, so just make sure your whole hand is moved over and your thumb stays behind that second finger. The next scale we'll do is a closed position D major scale. This is starting on the sixth string. So we've gone over these, this pattern a lot and it's a movable scale, right? So if I play it here, it's a D major scale. If I play it down here, it's C major scale, B, B flat. So um, movable major scales can just, you just move the pattern around. The only thing I'll say is remember this, Say the note names out loud when you play so that you actually are learning what the notes are. So like you're saying like D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. If you say the names of the notes out loud, you'll actually be gaining an awareness of fingerboard knowledge, but also of the key signature on the guitar. So make sure you do that. The other thing is play the octaves separately. So I'll do that in one second. So the pattern on the sixth string is this. first octave would go just up from one D to the next. And then from that D. So it's really important to practice the octave separately so that you learn the one octave patterns. Um, and that's so that you know what you're doing, right? Um, you gotta know where the roots are uh, and um, you have to know uh, where the Ds are in a D major scale. You can't just be doing fingering blindly. So that's a really good idea. You can say the note names out loud or, and also play the octaves separately. So let's do the, a different D major. This is closed on the fifth string. We've done lots of these too. If you've done the last section in the book that covers all of the major scale patterns over the entire fretboard, um, you'll recognize the different patterns in the octaves, right? Like this one is part of one of the fingerings and this one is also part of one of the fingerings. You can kind of see how I'm linking them together. Some students will study the first part of the book first, others will study the last part. It doesn't really matter. In the end, you'll learn both and if you review them lots, you'll recognize the patterns. So the, the separate octaves in that scale are or with the shift and then from that octave, so just from D to D and then D to D again. It's always good to break up your octaves and, and realize where the separate octaves occur so that if you ever are playing or sight reading a piece of music in D major, you can be like, oh, it's in, the notes are generally around here. That's my scale pattern. Those are the fingers I'll be using. Kind of brings an awareness of the key. And then an example of a D major um, open string shift. So open string shifts are used in repertoire a lot um, because while you shift, an, an open string can ring out while you move your hand, E, F sharp. So as you move your hand, an open string can be ringing out, making it very legato and making the shift easier as well. So it's used in repertoire a lot. So it starts with the open position pattern. So 
So when you get to that open E, D, E, F sharp, G. So it's just going into this D major pattern up here, and you're just shifting on the open E, and then you're getting your F sharp on that string. in repertoire so much and yet practiced on their own so rarely in scale books. Um, I don't know why that is, but they should be a regular part of our practice um, using open strings to shift up the neck, which we do all the time. It's also just good shift practice, right? Uh, making sure you keep your hand aligned and that you're very precise. Um, it's great practice for, for repertoire.